And I backed up and I looked up and it says for whites only. I says, I says, I was starting to tell him I was thirsty. Then something told me, he says, hold it, you're down south and you're in Georgia. And down here, they have a habit of hanging black people, castrating them, tarring them, them, shooting them, and nobody blinks an eye. And I said, you know what? I ain't never going to drink from that fountain again. <laughs> I went out and done my show and got underneath the Greyhound bus that was scheduled to carry us all over the country. I pulled a luggage in behind me, and there I stayed till we got out of South. <laughs> So what about the, the rock and roll shows generally? Were they were in the South? I mean, were they like now? Ruth Brown mentioned something about a line being down the middle. Would there be white people on one right, side and black right. on the other? Well, listen. Even in the military in those days, and you go at the base, they had a certain section, either the far back right or the far back left, where the blacks could sit and watch movies. And on the rock and roll shows, it was the same thing. Now the, the audience. But we're talking about army bases in the South. Or army, bases. army bases all over the United States. It wasn't until 1960 this country got hip uh -huh. and started mixing. If you remember, once upon a time, the Air Force was a part of the Army. Nothing could stop the Army Air Corps yeah. before they became a separate entity of their own. Uh -huh. But everything was prejudice in those days, including music. That's why we went to thank Alan Freed uh -huh. for playing white, black music. I mean, as people like Laverne Baker, Fats Domino, the Dell Vikings, Joe Williams, myself, James Brown, Bo Diddley, Jimmy Reed, we owe Alan Freed a great deal because after that it blossomed and yeah. exploded like an epidemic across the country. When you first came out with I Put a Spell on You, did you play the Apollo? Oh, many, many, many times. Many times. What kinds of shows were they with a lot of people or just? A lot people? of people and they were mixed. The Apollo was mixed because now you're up north. Mm -hmm. Down south, they still, they tell me, I haven't been down there because I have a contract now. I don't play anything past the Mason and Dixie line. Hmm. If I can live this long without going down south, I don't need to go down now. <laughs> well, who's on those shows with the Apollo with you? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Big Joe Turner, Nappy Brown, Jimmy Ricks and the Ravens, the <laughs> Orioles. Ruth Brown, Laverne Baker. Uh, well, you said they got mixed up too. Did he play with Buddy Holly? I know he didn't. He Buddy, play? well, Buddy Holly and the Crickets, uh, the Everly Brothers, Joanne Campbell. I wish <laughs> I had known this. I would have bought along a lot of flyers from the olden days. Oh, wait a minute. What? I got flyers. You know, with all the names of who's going to be on the show. Wow. Well, I got a flyer where Paul Anger's name is no bigger than that. Uh -huh. You know, and uh -huh. now Paul Anger's probably got more money than I got. Uh, you know, yeah. but I remember when he first came out with Diana and they wanted him to share the, the uh, uh, bill, the headline of the show. I said, well, the show's been on four days and I've been the headliner for four days. And as black as I am, I had to work hard for it. I am not going to step up and let this little white boy come in here and take over this dressing room with this show. I tell you what I will do, though. I let him share the bill, but I'm still closing the show. And if you make me go on after him. I'm going to make it hard for him to get on stage. <laughs> I'm going to make it so hard for him because I'm going to work with the people's minds. I'm going to reach into their chest and fumble with their emotions. I'm going to have them walking sideways. <laughs> now, if you think I'm joking, call my bluff. Don't believe a word I say. I am not the voodoo man for nothing. <laughs> I haven't been studying roots and herbs and going in, in Africa learning what the witch doctor do for nothing. See, even my wife out there is helpless. She, can, she doesn't know, but I put a spell on her and she told her. A, huh? You put a spell on her. Yeah, yeah. Ask her right now. Who, what's the greatest thing ever happened to you? And she'll point right up here and say, him. <laughs> and, then, and then later on, when I get out of here, she'll beat me. <laughs> hey, what about, okay, speaking of roots and herbs and all that, did you, did you know Solomon Burke? Oh, listen. Simon Burke's mother used to ask me in Philadelphia when Simon's first manager was Kay Williams, a disc jockey uh -huh. in Philadelphia. <laughs> used to put Simon on shows where he'd make fifteen, twenty-five hundred dollars a night. Simon would come on with fifty bucks. And his shirt would be frayed at the cuff and frayed up here at the collar. And this is a white dress shirt with a tie. And she says, Is that the way it should be? I says, No, he's being ripped off. What you should do is get rid of that manager. <laughs> And get him with somebody else is going to give him his money. I said, you should take that manager to court. Yeah, I knew Solomon Burke before he got into this preaching stuff and before he got as fat as he was. You know, yeah, I knew B.B. King when he was smaller 
uh, then a, a, a chopstick. Yeah. <laughs> But BB now King, he's a whole now, now he's, he's big as the Hindenburg. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Same thing with Solomon Burke. But time changes everybody. Yeah. And the most thing that I keep telling these young kids, is you must understand this: you don't really, really know anybody as well as you think you do, because people change and not according to plan. That means they're not aware they're going to change themselves. So you got to keep your eye on everything, because see, nothing lasts forever. Always is a lie. This studio wasn't here forever. It won't be here forever. You and I wasn't here forever. Right. We won't be here forever. No, nothing lasts forever. Yeah, so I try to wake people up. They don't pay me no mind because they think I'm crazy anyhow. Yeah. So I said, well, if I'm as crazy as you think I am, how come I can do what I do and go to the bank and you work at a nine-to-five job and still can't get to the bank? And they look at me real fast. I'm, it's not a put down. It's an honest statement. If you can't deal with reality and face facts, you ain't got no business in this world. Because there's people out here who will gobble you up in a minute. Look, 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 it's all over. So you touring? You you're leaving the country soon? You are, you're always going on the to On the 28th Europe. of April, I will take off for Europe. As a matter of fact, just three days ago, uh, we added another country onto the tour, and that was Spain. I don't like Spain. I've seen them make sandwiches in Spain, chicken, uh, eggs, or bacon, or cheese, and ham, and then they take it, pick up the sandwich and dip it in a vat of oil and give it to you while it's dripping. <laughs> and I said, well, who, what is that? <laughs> who gonna eat that? I'm not a mile mile. You know, the days of eating people is over, and we eat food now, you know? Uh, but I caught a cold. I lost a lot of weight in Spain, but they say well, how Madrid many, is better. How many other countries you going to? Watch, out, watch your wallet in Madrid. I, I hear, just watch your wallet. Carry your money in your front pocket. Good. Yeah. Okay. I will take your advice. Yeah. Usually I stick it in my boot. Yeah. You got to have a long arm to get down in that boot because the boot comes all the way up to here. But the point of it is that uh, I will, listen, I believe you're never too old to learn. As old as I am, I can always pick up on something. Well, see, I, we had a lot of thieves in New York. Yeah. We had a lot of thieves in Cleveland. Yeah. And we got trying to be thieves out here in L.A. Yeah. But I went through most of the baddest cities in the United States where the crime rate was terrific. So yeah. I'm not too worried about people picking my pocket. Yeah. If, if they do that, they're just going to get a spell on them. That's all.